Jesus came to earth. He graced this earth to save sinners of whom I am the worst. So that's what we're going to talk about today because many of you guys are probably sinners. Well, you are sinners. Some of you worse than others, um, like I was. And you want to come close to God now. You know, you see what's happening in the world and you want to, you want something different. You know, you want to, you want to be a better man. You want to be, uh, there's going to come a time where you're going to be there with your partner. One of you is going up. The other one's going to stay here on earth while God does his thing. So, um, it's actually easy what we have to do to become holy it's i mean to become a holy man is very difficult but you can be on your way to become a, a holy man from crime to holiness some of you may even be doing that like me i came from crime and my ambition now is to be holy and not sin um it's easy the hard part is doing it right so we have to come to god and ask the Holy Spirit to come into our lives and then we'll be guided as to what we need to do in order to start walking down the straight and narrow path. And I'm no prophet, I'm no nothing. I am just a person that loves God and I'm a person that's being guided by God and have developed a connection with God that I'm, I, I'm able to share my story, my life, Nothing theolo the theological because I am no expert. If you guys want expertise on scripture and the word and all that, you're probably in the wrong place. You know, because all I can talk about is my experience with God because it's real and it's genuine. And this is how things work for me. So, and it, I believe it's the same for, a lot of it is the same for a lot of people. We all have the same sins, basically. You know, and some of us just... uh we revel in them more than others. Some of some people sadly even embrace their sinful life. I've never, you know, I've never uh, wanted to do that. But my surroundings is not, I hate, it sounds like an excuse, but the life that I used to live in all that, it was catering towards sin. But now I know why I was put in that place so that I could have this transformation and maybe help some of you guys out that are trying to uh, become uh, reborn again, you know, and what it what it all boils down to a lot of us may feel like I know I did as early as today, you know, I just had this, I was just enlightened by a deep worship session that um, that I had earlier this morning, I was soaking spiritually uh, with um, the folks out of uh, upper room sets. And um, I just really had a revelation. Because the cross I was starting to carry was starting to become very heavy, extremely heavy. Um, this started, this, what I'm doing here, um, my mission on earth has felt like a job. Lately, it was starting to feel like a job. And I, had, um, I was enlightened today. I had a revelation. And it's not about us um, pleasing God. It's not about us loving God. You know, that's important. But what it's really about and when you when when the aha moment happened for me is when I learned that it's about God's love for us. That's what it's always been about. God's love for us. And if we stay within that spirit, if we stay within God's love, there is no way of doing wrong. That's the key. So pray for God. To pray to God to always be aware of his love because then we'll make the right decisions we'll make the right choices and getting to that place is difficult as a sinner i couldn't get to that place you know i couldn't even if i tried you know but it starts with baby steps this is how it started with me again i'm just speaking from experience it starts with baby steps right it starts with a look it starts with a conversation it starts with prayer you know, and as if you keep doing those little things, then God's going to bless you with the Holy Spirit. Or you're going to, let me rephrase that, you'll be more in tune 
to the Holy Spirit that's speaking to you through your conscious. That your conscious, that's how the Holy Spirit speaks through you. And um, for me, it was telling me, leave your friends alone, quote unquote friends. That's what it started with, right? Um, they were, I'm not going to say that they were, some of them were bad, but I'm not going to say that it's because of them that I was struggling. It's just that whole environment of, you know, crime and low life in it and all that um, was no good for the walk that God had in the works for me, for my walk with Jesus. It, it, I had to leave him. I had to leave him alone. And it, it, times got very lonely, guys. It got uh, extremely lonely and depressing. Um, luckily, God blessed me with this guy right here. You see that? That's my pit bull, Rusty. I had him during those lonely times, and it was just me and him for a long time. We would go running. You know, we, we had a good life, uh, me and him. But it was a lonely life, but he helped out. Because my parents are immigrants from Mexico. They don't really understand the American life, especially the street life. You know, so I'm already at a disadvantage there. Um, I couldn't come to them. or You know, they couldn't relate to what I was going through. And then, um, so I, all I had was Rusty at the time. But I remember even as I was going through those runs, I would be connected with God. You know, and I'd be asking God for strength. And then I would feel the Holy Spirit and he would push me. You know, I used to run over in... Um, Elysian Park and all the way up to Angels Point from the bottom. That's a long run, you know, and Rusty used to hang with me. And, you know, the last couple miles I couldn't do it. He would push me. This is just how you start to connect with the Holy Spirit. One, I, I did what he said, leave your friends alone. And I never looked back. So, and like I said, extremely lonely, but I did it. And that's where the key is. The key is in obedience. You must obey the Lord. You must obey the Holy Spirit. You must obey God. Whatever he's telling you, you must do it. Um, and then two, leave drugs alone. And three, leave alcohol alone. And then four, which at the time, you know, when, I, when all this started, um, I didn't have a girlfriend. So, but he told me to leave like women alone so that I can focus on him and him only. And I started doing good, you know, and that's that's kind of how it starts. You know, you got to leave things alone. You got to and you're not isolating yourself, guys. He's isolating you. You're being isolated for a reason. You have a calling. It's a godly calling. There's more to this. There's more to there's more to eternity. I mean, there's more than earth. There's more than this life, and that's eternal life. That's what's important. The life that we're going to be living forever. And this is where your spiritual strength comes in. And spiritual training is real. If you guys watch my shorts on a daily basis, that's what that is. That's, you know, you start doing devotionals, you know, and then the devotionals start to, you start to walk in tune with what the devotional says, you will start to walk in tune with what the Bible says. Scripture starts making better sense. You start adapting to what the what the Bible says and it starts manifesting in your life. So that's it, guys. That's all I wanted to talk to you guys about on um, what it takes to start walking the walk, you know? And once you start walking the walk, the blessings will begin to like just... They'll begin to embrace or oh, that's not the right word. They'll begin to like encompass God's love. And that is a beautiful thing when you really feel it. And I hope that you guys do listen to this message so that you guys can move closer to God. Um, we must become Christ-like. And it's hard in today's day and age because the devil's running loose everywhere, you know? And one thing I didn't talk about either is music. The music you listen to, you guys, that you're opening up, you're opening up portals. You're opening up portals for the devil to enter you in a very slick way. The extreme left things that we watch on TV, there's some stuff now on TV, guys, that's, it's like, 
they're like the devil's like low key planting seeds into your brain. You know what I mean? And I hope I don't lose some of you guys when I said extreme left because I'm no way political. But um, you know, for me it's just God. That's my that's that's my life. But the reason I said that is because that's what you see on TV right now, on Netflix, you know, on Apple TV. Um, I was watching, I started watching a show on Apple TV. I'm not even going to say which one it is, but my God, the things they were doing, they were normalizing um, premarital sex. They were um, normalizing young, and I do mean young, like teenage girls hooking up with 50 year old men think about that like this is these are the type of little seeds that they were planting and you know it's it's a, it's a show about um a young woman and you know she's her mom died and she's going through stuff but just the messages that they're going that they're talking about they're just normalizing things that are not normal you know some of you guys may not like what i'm about to say but divorce is not normal and look how, look how prevalent it is in the United States, guys. You know, and what that tells me is that we are making wrong choices based on the fact that we're not connected with God, because you wouldn't make the right, you wouldn't make the wrong choice in life if you were connected to God. You know, and that um, can can play out in different parts of your life. It's not just in your love partner you know your husband your your wife it can play out in um getting your getting you your, getting you and your family out of a negative situation in your community for whatever reason you may be going through something in your community where there's just bad energy everywhere god doesn't want that for you he does not want that for you what god wants for you listen listen here and listen closely what god wants for you is love and joy that is it if you're not getting it it is not from God, you know, so we must also not be afraid to cut people that God is telling us to cut. And it's not necessarily because those people are bad people. It could be because those people have not come to Christ the way you have. So their influences could be negative. Sometimes it may be family. Oftentimes it's friends, co-workers, neighbors, you know, and if we don't listen to what God's telling us to do, and we're going to keep struggling. And God never leaves you alone. He never leaves you alone. But you're going to keep struggling. And then you're going to keep asking why. Why, God? Why haven't my prayers been answered? Why? Well, are you listening to God? Are you listening to what he's telling you to do? Okay, that's where you need to start. Obedience. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this message. Stay tuned for more. Because they're going to be coming, dude. Like I said, it's me and Jesus, our Lord and Savior. From now till the day I die.